Good evening, all. You know, when a man is popular, generous, and well-liked, it conjures up a certain picture. Well, that was Harry. One of the best. That's what everyone said about Harry. Well, nearly everyone. Again, no. Hello, me old China. How's it going? Here, I'll do that. Oh. I'll take them up to you, you Thanks very much, mate. Oh. Hello, Johnny. How's the missus? You're quite a stranger. You miss me, have you? See you around. I'll take this one. No, it's all right, Harry. I can manage. Well, there's no hurry. Take your time. Yeah. No, you don't have to oh, do that. Go on, take it. Buy the old woman some flowers. All right, then. Thanks very much, right. Harry. Up there. No lift. That's how we all keep so fit. <laughs> right, mate? Right, Harry. Come on. Right. Thanks, Wally. Keep the change. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back, Mike. Nice to be back. <laughs> ah, here he is. Ah, well, what are you having? Ah, uh, nothing for me. Hello, Mike. Hi. Hey, I thought we were going to have a couple of drinks on Mike's promotion. Uh, I can't stop. Harry Simpson's back. The Spanish police threw him out. Now, don't tell me you're going to start working overtime on Harry already. When he's in town, this is Harry's pub. The odds are he'd be here tonight, buying admiration as usual. Well, I'm not one of his admirers. Well, let's go somewhere else, then. Oh, no, 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 I've got a bit of checking to do. I want to have a chat with Harry tomorrow. Another time, Mike. I don't know. Harry's always seemed all right to me. I'll tell you what Harry is. He's the scum of the earth. Hi, Brenda. Harry. Hello. All right. Come on in. Yeah, no, thanks. I'm just off to the boozer for an hour. Do you want to come along? Oh, I can't, Harry. Hello, young fellow, me lad. Do you remember your uncle, queen. Harry? What? Yes, I do. <coughs> it, he's more like the spitting image of your Ice Lenny all the cream. time. Ice Harry. Cream. What? Have you heard anything from Lenny? There. Just a minute. Here. Don't it. Go and buy yourself an ice cream. Go on. And bring a special one back for your mum. Been getting your money regular, have you, Brenda? Oh, yes, thanks, Harry. But not a word from Lenny. No, well, I had a message from him while I was in Spain. He, uh, he said I was to give you this. Well, it's a bit extra for the boy, you know. Did you see him? No, well, I told you, he's had to go to ground. I, I warned him not to get mixed up. Well, it's the wrong sort of people. Anyway, I don't want to say any more because I'm opening a little blow over here. 
I don't know how to manage without you, oh, Harry. Go on. I mean, Lenny's my partner. I'm only giving you what's yours. No, he's on his way back already. He'll make a great right winger, won't he? <laughs> Oh, are you, Stuff? Yeah, mind you don't drop them. Oh, Harry, you've oh, changed. Oh, forget it. Tell them to buy something nice for his mum. Come on, we'll be back by time. Bye, Harry. Bye. And thanks again. Forget it, love. Look after yourself, mind. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Harry. How are you going? Great. Nice to see you. Aren't you brown? Get peeled twice, love. Yeah, cost a lot of money. <laughs> it's Harry. Hello, Wally. Hello. All right. Great. Lovely to see you. Good to see you back, it's Harry. It's good to be back, mate. What was it like, Harry? Smashing at the time of my life. Again, oh, late to you too. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh, yeah. oh, not so good. Oh. No, Harry, not since my gym died. Never mind me, old darling. I'll look after you. Oh. Hey, Harry, what? Leave the birds alone. <laughs> 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 what, are you getting jealous? <laughs> what are you going to have, Harry? Don't get it off. Oh. It's my shout tonight. Yeah, same again all round, Wally. Ooh. Yeah, a large one for yourself. Yeah, give a double to, um, what's her name? Oh, uh, Mother Riley. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you having? Gin and tonic. 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 Gin Mike Brewer, how are you, Mike? Are you just visiting or back in the old patch? Back for good. Oh, yeah? Just been made up. I'm detective sergeant now. Is that a fact? Yeah, sorry, should have called you mister. Yeah, I'll watch it in future anyway. Congratulations. I couldn't be more pleased. Thanks. Yeah, what about your son-in-law, Mr Dixon? He's a nice chap, Andy. Straight as a die. Hasn't he got promotion yet? Well, it's in the wind. What, sweating on the top line, is he? Well, I hope he gets it. Should have been a DI long ago. Hey, Harry, don't you want yours? I'd better get back, I suppose. You know how it is, the old mates. Anyway, nice to see you, Mr. Dixon. Yeah, and you, Mr. Brewer. <laughs> All the best. Oh, by the way, Mr. Brewer, what perfumes your wife like best? Yeah, oh, never mind. I'll send a selection. I'll smuggle them from customs. Let's sit down. So Reginald said, you're not in my dream, I'm in yours. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you know what about the castanet dancer? There's a fellow with him. One doesn't say anything. But Bernard Moss, Harry's number two. Why is Annie so down on Harry? Well, he's taken some pretty hard knocks over Harry. Three times he had to withdraw cases for lack of evidence, and the DPP didn't like it, which didn't do Annie's career much good. Well, I suppose it depends whether the evidence was ever there or not. Well, I don't know, Mike. Andy thinks it was. But he can never prove that Harry had anything to do with the witnesses changing their tune. In fact, he's never been able to prove that Harry isn't exactly what he says he is, a property developer. Mr. Dixon! Two large whiskers. <coughs> Harry sent them over. Oh. All the best! Hey, Harry, the law's here. Oh? Who is it? Crawford. He's got it in for you, that fellow has. Persecution, that's what it is. Wow. He's got to find something to do, hasn't he? Thanks, mate. Here, go and buy yourself something to drink, eh? Thanks, Harry. I'd lodge a complaint if it was me. Yeah. It's not fair. No, you're dead right. Nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Want to drive around the block? You want me to stay? What? No, Bernie, you push off. You've got things to do, right? Right. Fine, Bernie. That's the property business. Bricks and mortar, like always. 
Come on in, Mr. Crawford. Darling, somebody else I'd like you to meet. Come in, Mr. Crawford. Uh, do you smoke? Ah, no thanks. Darling, this is Detective Inspector Crawford. Sergeant. Sorry. Jumped the gun, didn't I? Detective Sergeant. This is Miss Croft, my fiance. How do you do, Mr. Crawley? Miss Croft, it's Crawford. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, I've met so many friends of Harry's. Have you known each other long? Quite a while, yes. Why don't you finish getting ready, love, eh? Shan't be long. Well, it's nice to have met you. I, I hope we'll see you again soon. Oh, you may, yes. <laughs> oh, sit down. Where are you living now, Mr. Crawford? Still Chelmsford? Yes. You must get tired with all that travelling. Why don't you move back into town? Why don't you move out of town, Harry? I was born right here. I wouldn't feel comfortable anywhere else. <laughs> well, looks comfortable enough now, I say that. Well, I've improved it a bit, you know. Listen, I've got a nice conversion just being finished. Nice old house near Kellington Oval. The bottom flat's plenty big enough for a family. Use of the garden, keep the kids happy. Wouldn't be all that expensive. Just say the word and it's yours. You can sell your place. You should end up with a few grand for yourself. There's only one favour I want from you, Harry. Tell me what happened to Lenny Lane. I wish I knew, mate. We were real old Chinas, Lenny and me. That's not what I heard. I heard Lenny was getting above himself. Turned into a bit of a nuisance. Wanted to be number one. Mr Crawford, there's always someone ready to spread the dirt about anyone. I mean, some people think I'm a villain. I'm not. I'm just a businessman out to make a bob or two. Some really big villains have used that refrain, Harry. Funny how Lenny didn't tell his wife where he was going. Ready, darling. Mr. Crawford's just leaving. Sorry. Sorry, we're expected somewhere. Shan't be a tick. All right. Well? Some other time, we'll talk about Lenny again. Look. I don't know anything. I mean, I've been abroad on business. Oh, yeah, you tried to move in on that Spanish villa swing. No, I bought a building plot near Alicante, that's all. That's why the Spanish police chucked you out. I couldn't speak the language. I picked a bad lawyer. They'd have charged me if they had anything. I mean, just like you would, Mr Crawford. Excuse me. Right, love. We're on our way. I'd like another word with you about your husband. I've told you everything I know. But the day you disappeared. I can't help you. Please, my little boy's fallen down and hurt himself. I must see to him. Excuse me. Freddy? Oh. Cheers. Cheers. You still got a clean driving license, Freddy? Yeah. Why? Let's see. All right if I borrow it for a while? What for? Fifty quid. Yeah, but look, I don't know what you want it for. If something happened, that's got my name on it. Nothing's going to happen. I just want a clean license, Freddy, that's all. Not yet. When I tell you, you write and say that you've lost it. So what does it matter for 50 quid? Well, I'd like to help you, Bernie. Don't get me wrong. Honey, I don't want no trouble. I am glad about that. Because Harry looked after you when you had that accident, didn't he, Freddy? Paid for your kids to go on holiday and all sorts of things. Harry? All right, if it's for Harry. So soon? Well, no point in waiting. We both in our own minds, eh? Well, Marion did write, of course, but 
We assumed it wouldn't be for some time yet. I mean, you've only known each other a few weeks. Well, we're getting a special licence. I mean, we're going to have a white wedding, the lot. I mean, all the trimmings. Oh, I'll see to that. I don't want to lumber you with all the expense. That's not the point. Then there is an age difference, of course. Mum, please. Well, I suppose I'd better clear away. Oh, let me help you. No, no, that's all right. Marion can give me a hand. You stay and talk to my husband. Right. Marion, you can't really know someone you've met abroad. Oh, please, Mum, don't try and interfere. I'm really thinking of your good gear. I love him. You think about that. Oh, very nice. Well, don't misunderstand what my wife was saying, Mr Simpson. We've got nothing against you personally. Of yes. course not. Do you mind? No. no. just that Marion's an only child and, uh, well, all we're saying is just hang on for a while, that's all. You're in insurance, I'm told. What happens when you sell a life policy? Uh, do you get commission? Oh, yes. Why? Marion's the girl for me. I mean, you know, the one. I'll, I'll look after her for good. You got my word on oh, that. Well, we don't doubt that, but... All the same, um, your good lady's right. I mean, there is an age difference after all, and I want to make sure that Marion's all right if anything happened. It's about time I took out some life insurance. What should we say? 50,000? 50? Well, don't you think that's enough? Yes, yes. Well, can you fix that up for me, Arthur? Well, well yes, I'd, I'd be pleased to, Mr Simpson. Oh, Harry. I mean, everybody calls me Harry. Come on, give the group. Now, uh, first one out the traps. Yeah, me and me mates. Now, yeah, come on, have to give us a smile. You're not smiling, like it's smile. Me and yours. Oh! Can I kiss her? Oh, yeah. Dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's look at uh, Maury? Come here. Oh, give us a kiss. Oh, you got it. All right. Come on, Maury. Now, Bernie. Bernie, he's hiding again. Come, come, come here, Bernie. Kiss the bride. This is the bride. You met. Go on. Give her a kiss. Go on. Ah, oh, well done. What? In public? Oh, Johnny. George. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, oh, look at him. How's that? Do you know the girl, George? No. A good family, though. A respectable background, according to Andy. Did you mean he checked up on her? Yeah. It's going a bit far, was not it? Oh, right, sir. Now what do you want? What about trying the big one? The group, all right? The big one. Now, everybody in for this one. Now, come on, hurry up. The champagne's getting warm. Now, come on. Everybody smile. Hold it. Yeah. That's good. Great. Thanks very much. Is that all then, Mr Crawford? That's all. And thanks very much for the souvenirs. No trouble, Mr Crawford. No trouble at all. Harry's come out well. Never mind Harry. Let's get all those faces identified. I didn't have any choice, Harry. He leaned on me. I didn't want to, but... Yeah, all right. I thought I'd better tell you as soon as I could. I mean, well, I couldn't help it. I didn't like handing the law a set of your wedding photographs. Look, Eddie, shut up. Go and buy yourself a drink. You're getting on my nerves. Right, Harry. Sorry. Crawford's really sticking his neck out, isn't he? You should get him off your back, Harry. Oh, Bernie. Not with Crawford, he's a copper. 
No, no. There are other ways. Mr. Dixon, uh, can I have a word with you? What about? I've got a problem, Mr. Dixon. I'm a businessman, right? The only argument I've got is with the tax people. Why is it Mr. Crawford's got it in for me? Has he? Well, I don't, don't want to cause any trouble, but he's doing things he's got no right to do. I thought you might have a word with him. Well, I can't tell a CID officer what to do, even if I wanted to. Oh, come on. You know, he'd listen to you. You know that. I'll tell you what you could do, Harry. Well, what's that? Offer him a cheap flat in London. Then he could sell his house in Chelmsford and make something on it. Well, I was only trying to be helpful, Mr. Dixon. Harry, I don't know if you're what you say you are or if you're the biggest villain in the green, but stop trying to give presents to coppers. They think there's a reason. Well, I like to give people a helping hand, that's all. I mean, that's me. That's Harry. Well, some of us don't need it, Harry. There's some perfume on its way back to you from Sergeant Brewer. All right, then. But don't say I didn't try and do it the easy way. Now, your car's causing an obstruction. Do you mind moving it? Yeah, pleasure. I'm having a round of golf with a mate of mine this evening anyway. I'll be with you in a moment. I'll have a usual. Right. Excuse me, sir. Aren't you Detective Chief Superintendent Barker? Yes. Oh, I'm Harry Simpson. Now, I've applied for membership. I was just having a round with the chap who's putting me up. I'm just wondering if I could have a private word with you, sir. I know you're on the committee. I'm sorry, Mr... Uh, uh, Simpson. I can't discuss membership applications with you. Excuse me. No, no, it's not about that, sir. It's about one of your men, Sergeant Crawford. Oh? Look, don't think I take this seriously, because I don't. But the thing is, he's got it in for me. I mean, Lord knows why. <laughs> he's even got copies of my wedding photographs. The thing is, have you got anything against me? I mean, to say, I wouldn't want to embarrass you trying to join your golf club. But should I withdraw my application? Yes, George. The Chief Super's on the phone. Wants to see you at Division. Another 30 seconds I'd have left for the weekend. Well, I've just told him you haven't. I'll be with you in a moment. You want it, you sir? Yes. Uh, if you like a game of golf tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, my club suit you? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to, sir. Good. But, but Mary, my wife, she's got a couple of old friends of hers in town from Australia. They haven't seen one another for years. Uh, we're spending the weekend with them. Yeah, in that case, we'll just play the nine holes. 10 o'clock, all right? Yes, sir. Good. Bad luck. Just in the rough. Yep. Well, you've got your promotion board coming up soon. I hope you'll get it this time. <laughs> so do I. You've been a detective sergeant for a long time now. You're over there somewhere. Knack of getting yourself into trouble.
Andy. Now this fella, Harry Simpson. I'm still pretty much a new boy in the green. What have you got against him? Nothing much, except that he ought to be inside. I sent for his file. He's not been in trouble for 15 years. All that means is we haven't nailed him. Harry Simpson's the worst kind of villain. Because no crime to get married. No, though I feel sorry for the girl. Then why send for copies of the wedding photographs? A check on Harry's close friends. There were three men there known to us that I'd dearly love to get my hands on. So there are three more against whom we can prove nothing. Tell me about this man. Sir, he's a property developer. In a small way. Buys up old houses. Turns them into flats. That's his cover. Otherwise, he's in on most things. Long-term frauds, receiving, hijacking, protection. Any kind of easy money. Harry's there. But you've never managed to get him into court. Witnesses get bored off or frightened off. I assume you can't prove that either. Harry is the most popular man in the green. Most people around here think the sun rises when Harry gets out of bed. But a few could tell you a different story. Only they won't. Fear, beatings up, violence. <laughs> oh, not Harry. He pays other people to do that. That's what I've got against Harry Simpson. He buys and bullies immunity from the law. His partner, Lenny Lane, disappeared just before Harry took off for Spain. You think Harry had some connection with that? Uh, Harry supporting Mrs. Lane. Paying her a pension, if you like. But I've never known Harry do anything that wasn't for his own ends. Congratulations. You're on. Just as well we only played nine holes. Mind you, I always get going in the second half. <laughs> Trouble is, you know, put me in a very awkward position with uh, Harry's application for membership. That's all part of his respectable cover. A good golf club, mixing with the right people. I can't oppose his application now, even if I wanted to. His approach to me was perfectly straightforward and above board. <laughs> Brought your pressure on him to my notice. That's what he intended, sir. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't do you any harm to pull your horns in for a bit. You missed your promotion before. I wouldn't like to see it happen again. Warned off. That's what it amounts to. Well, I know how you feel, Andy. But a piece of dirt like Harry Simpson could get through to the chief superintendent. But look, if you could have given your governor anything except suspicion, he'd have backed you all the way, and you know it. Time and time again, I've had it as near as that. I'm not sure about Harry myself. I've come to the conclusion I don't much like the way he goes about things, but what does that mean in a court of law? It's not worth taking chances at this stage of the game. That's all the chief super would say. Which is just what Harry wanted. He'd be laughing his head off. <laughs> so the old lady said, I thought we were past that. <laughs> 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 Did you get it? That was this fella. He was lecturing on love in the 70s, and the old lady said, off. <laughs> Never mind, Bernie. He's got no sense of humour. I know that. <laughs> All right, then, mate. I'll get you another drink, but I know you've got things to do. Come on. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Simpson. Goodbye. You reckon we'll complete that job, all right? It's well underway. Good, well, I'll leave it to you, Bernie. See you. Bernie never could understand a joke. Oh, Harry, I'm sorry. I've tried to like him, but I can't. Oh, Bernie? No, oh, he's all right. Well, there's something about him. Listen, I don't want to be bothered with the business details because I want to spend my time with you, right? So I need people like Bernie. Bernie just does what he's told, right? They should be pulling in at the next transport cab. Good. I'll go first. I'll be about half an hour. You look after the wagon. Okay.
Ted, just stop then. No, I got uh, steak and chips coming up. I just left me fags in the cab. See you then. Please. here. Didn't see what they looked like, though. There was a fellow there in a the car. He might have seen him. I got his number. I wrote it down somewhere. on board. High value load. That's why there were two of us. 20,000 pounds worth of cosmetics. Andy? Tire marks here. Could have belonged to the switch vehicle. Mike, go and check the CO again. Okay. Thanks, sir. I'll talk with you two again in a minute. I'll just get on to the CO, George. Hi. The whole thing smells of a setup to me. One of them involved? Edwards, driver's mate, probably. What's it worth? 500 quid? To tip someone off where they'd be stopping? Then let himself get tied up? Dwyer, the driver, got the number of a car which could have been involved. He didn't realize that. Mentioned it too late, unfortunately. Andy. I've just traced that car. Abandoned? No, it was a straight car. Rented from a car hire firm. Back. What do you look like? About 30 or so, dark, your height. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit less. We see so many people in here. And the uh, driving license recorded here belonged to the man who hired the car? Yes, a Mr. Barnett. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. This is the Frederick Barnett I know. He's a damn sight more than 30. No. No. You hired a car, ready? No. That was used in a hijacking. I didn't hire no car. But your license was used. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I lost it. Ah, uh, don't give me that. I reported it. I wrote to her. Look, I've even got a copy of the letter. So what do they want, Freddy? A clean license to hire a car? How much did they pay you? 40 quid, 50. It wasn't like that. Who was it, Freddy? That's what we want to know. Mr. Crawford, I keep telling you, I lost it. Someone must have found it and used it. Well, that's it. That's what we're trying to find out. Oh, that's right, Freddy. Who might have found it, that's all. I don't want a statement. I don't want you to stand up in court. I just want a name. It's a guessing game, Freddy. But if you don't play, I can make trouble for you, and I will, I promise you. Well, I don't know. It could have been anybody. Bernie was around. He might have picked it up. Bernie must. But he works for someone, Freddy. So who told Bernie what to do? He might have said something about a favor. For Harry. Right, Freddy, right. That's all we want to know. Oh, 
Bernie, come on in. Not inside. What's wrong? The law around at my place asking questions. I got the word and gave them the slip. There's only one way they could have known. Freddy? They must have got him through the car. What about the stuff? Well, that's all right. All is arranged. How come they spotted that car? That's why we went to a lot of trouble, because that car wouldn't be connected. It's bad luck, Harry, that's all. The driver came out of the cafe again. But I reckon we're OK. Except for Freddy. I don't know how much he said. He shouldn't have said anything, Bernie. He should have known better. Maybe you'd better encourage him to change his tune. All right, now come on now. Come on, off. Go off, please. There's nothing more to be seen. I'm going to put it aside. Come on. All right. Okay. It's Freddie Barnett. No more to be seen, please. On your way. Hey, Andy. See his wrist there? He must have been tied up. Look okay. Ready. Freddy. What happened? Got knocked down. Come on, Freddy. Who did it? He didn't run. Didn't see who it was. Help me, Freddy. We can get them if you help me. I made a mistake. Bernie couldn't have had that license. I wasn't nowhere to run. Nothing to do with Harry, either. Nothing to do with Harry. Oscar Delta to Oscar 1-1. Oscar 1-1 one, one to Oscar Delta. Go ahead, over. Hey, George. What's up, Mike? I'm going to pick Andy up at the hospital. The report's just come in on Lenny Lay. You'll wear yourself out doing that. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> you go with him and check in, darling. I'll park the car. Okay. Don't bother. You can put that luggage back again. Hey! Hold it. What is this? Mike. Police, put it back. What's happening? Harry, what do they want? Just a minute, love. Mr. I'm going on a delayed honeymoon with my wife. Are you arresting me? If so, what's the charge? No charge, Harry. We're making some inquiries. I'd like you to assist us. Well, certainly, Mr. Court. In a month's time, when I get back. It won't wait. I want you to accompany me now. I'm a law-abiding citizen, Mr. Crawford. I've got rights, and I'm telling you. You stop me now. You won't just lose your promotion. I'll have you back pounding the beat. A body was washed up on the Essex coast. He's been identified. Lenny Lane. Lenny? Yeah. He's dead. Very. I'm sorry about that. Poor old Lenny. Well, yeah, my wife comes first, and I promised her. He'd been shot. The bullet's gone to ballistics. It's a murder case, Harry. 
I got a warrant to search your flat. I'm sure you'll want to be present. I didn't think you could get a search warrant for a murder investigation, Mr. Crawford. You're right, Harry. You've done your homework, as always. But this isn't concerned with Lenny's murder. It's concerned with cosmetics stolen by hijack. You drive back to your flat, Harry. We'll follow. I'll do it if you don't mind, Mrs. Simpson. Do you want this unlocked, Mr. Crawford? you have to do this? Do you people think you can do just what you like? Leave it, love. No, I want to know. By what right? The magistrate felt that there were sufficient grounds to authorise the issue of a search warrant, Mrs Simpson. Grounds? What grounds? Because you said so, that's all. What lies were told? No lies, Mrs Simpson. Reasonable suspicion. But who's to say what's reasonable and what isn't except you? I used to think the police were fair, but Harry tried to warn me, but... I wouldn't believe it, but now... Forget it. They're not worth it. Well, I'm going to ring my father. He'll know what to do. Don't worry, love. I know what to do as well. I'll be ringing my solicitor as soon as they're finished. All right? Are you finished? Yep. It's quite a crowd outside. I wouldn't want them to do something like letting your tyres down, Mr. Corbin. All right, all right, now nothing's happening. Come on, now there's nothing to see. Come on, please. All right, come on. Let's keep the landing clear, shall we? That's better. All right, and stay clear. Well, let's have a drink, eh? A drink? Give them nothing. Get them out of here. Oh, no, darling, there are things to be said. They know it, I know it. Go and see if they've left the bedroom tidy. Come on. Well, I can't leave him, Mr. Crawford. I've got to protect my good name. I have to get my lawyer onto it. Sorry and all that, but uh, there it is. Up to you. What do you think I'd done? Shot Lenny, hidden the gun in a drawer. Did you shoot him? Oh, come on. Lenny's my friend. Cheers. Sit down, please. You're sorry to have dragged you into this, Mr. Brew. I'll survive. There's only so much a copper can do. I mean, there are limits. Well, I've got to put you on the carpet, otherwise some people might wonder why I didn't. Well, wish I could suggest a deal. But I can't. I mean, too many people know about it. Oh, I'll fetch a table from the kitchen. No, oh, this'll do. No, it'll take a minute. What's wrong with the stall, Harry? key. A key to what, I wonder? A safe deposit box, by the look of it. Now, what would you keep in a safe deposit box, Harry? Let's go and find out, shall we? Harry, what is it? You stay here, love. Well, Harry, tell me. Stay here, now. Do as I ask, my love. You stay here.
Thank you. Okay, George. Very pretty. Very unusual. Couldn't you better part with it? The bullet which killed Lenny Lane came from a gun of this caliber. Harold Simpson, it's my duty to warn you. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. All right, all right, I know the spiel. I'm not saying anything until I see my solicitor. Ballistics established that a bullet from that gun had killed Lenny Lane. The only fingerprints on the gun belonged to Harry. Once he was arrested, people who were frightened of him, like Freddie Barnett, began to talk. Harry was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. His wife, Marion, still won't believe in his guilt and says she'll wait for him. None of his friends believe that he's guilty either. Harry is one of the best. That's what they still say. <laughs>